If you had a day where nobody would recognize you. I don't think I'd be that different, honestly. I dropped the whole trying to be something for somebody a long time ago. So I pretty much walk through the world except when I want to be funny or I want to do something outrageous. I don't <laughs> have any trouble being myself and I don't have any trouble saying no when I mean no. When, uh, I don't feel there is a you know, pressing uh, responsibility to please everyone. I'm not unkind to people. No. I love people. I would much prefer saying hello and who are you and what are you doing today than uh, giving a selfie yeah. because selfies stop the world. You know, they stop life. You then go <laughs> like yeah, that yeah. and it's going on Instagram uh, to give people a false sense of relevance. People talk about depression all the time. The difference between depression and sadness, sadness is just you know, from happenstance, whatever happened or didn't happen for you, or, you know, grief or whatever it is. And depression is your body saying to you, I don't want to be this character anymore. I don't want to hold up this, this avatar that you've created in the world. It's too much for me. Deep rest. Your body needs to be depressed. Mm -hmm. It needs deep rest from the character that you've been trying to play. I act because I'm broken mm. Uh, mm. in a lot of pieces. Mm. And uh, acting gives me a chance to reconfigure those pieces into a thousand different things uh, that are positive for people to watch. Was there ever a moment where you first sort of realized, like, I want to be a performer. This is the thing that I want to do with my life. Uh, there was never any other choice. From the time I, that there was consciousness in the body, I was, uh, I was looking at a man named Percy, my dad, who was the most incredible character that you'd ever meet. If, if you met him for five minutes, you thought you knew him for 50 years. And he wrapped everyone that came into our house in stories and jokes. And uh, I became his calling at a certain point and he was always super behind me. But from the first time I can remember, him just lighting up the room, you know, yeah. and him just like wrapping everybody in a story or whatever and, and uh, going, oh, that's, that's the thing I want to do. You know, that's, that's what I want to be. My father could have been a great comedian, but he didn't believe that that was possible for him. And so he made a conservative choice. Instead, he got a safe job as an accountant. And when I was 12 years old, he was let go from that safe job and our family had to do whatever we could to survive. I learned many great lessons from my father, not the least of which was that you can fail at what you don't want. So you might as well take a chance on doing what you love. You know, I watched the effect of my father's love and humor and how it altered the world around me. And I thought, that's something to do. That's something worth my time. It wasn't long before I started acting up. You know, people would come over to the house and they'd be greeted by a seven-year-old throwing himself down a large flight of stairs. <laughs> they would say, what happened? And I would say, I don't know, let's check the replay. <laughs> I'd go back to the top of the stairs and come back down in slow motion. Now fear is going to be a player in your life, but you get to decide how much. You can spend your whole life imagining ghosts, worrying about the pathway to the future, but all there will ever be is what's happening here and the decisions we make in this moment which are based in either love or fear. So many of us choose our path out of fear disguised as practicality. What we really want seems impossibly out of reach and ridiculous to expect so we never dare to ask the universe for it. When I was about 28, after a decade as a professional comedian, I realized one night in LA that the purpose of my life had always been to free people from concern, just like my dad. The only one I hadn't freed was myself, and that's when my search for identity deepened. I wondered who I'd be without my fame. Who would I be if I said things that people didn't want to hear? Or if I defied their expectations of me? And that peace that we're after lies somewhere beyond personality, beyond the perception of others, beyond invention and disguise, even beyond effort itself. You can join the game, fight the wars, play with form all you want. But to find real peace, you have to let the armor go. Your need for acceptance can make you invisible in this world. Don't let anything stand in the way of the light that shines through this form. Risk being seen in all of your glory. Your job 
is not to figure out how it's going to happen for you, but to open the door in your head. And when the door opens in real life, just walk through it. And don't worry if you miss your cue, because there's always doors opening. They keep opening. And when I say life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you, I really don't know if that's true. <laughs> I'm just making a conscious choice to perceive challenges as something beneficial so that I can deal with them in the most productive way. You'll come up with your own style. That's part of the fun. You are ready and able to do beautiful things in this world. And after you walk through those doors today, you will only ever have two choices, love or fear. Choose love and don't ever let fear turn you against your playful heart. What's happening right now inside everybody is they're going, who am I? And they're depressed. People go like, oh, Jim's been depressed and stuff. Well, yeah, I was depressed when I was trying to be the Wizard of Oz. But now I know that Oz is a character. You know, I think that everybody deals with that. Everybody walks around and they go like, why am I depressed? Well, it's because you're trying to be something for the world, you know? And as soon as you, you know, let that go, better things happen because they're just happening. Right? It's not, uh, you know, now it's just sadness. You know, sadness comes, happiness comes. It's the weather that flies by in the sky. It doesn't sit on you long enough to drown you. A few months ago, I woke up and I suddenly got it. I understood suddenly how thought was just an illusory thing and how thought is responsible for, if not all, most of the suffering we experience. And then I suddenly felt like I was looking at these thoughts from another perspective. And I wondered, who is it that's aware that I'm thinking? And suddenly I was thrown into this expansive, amazing feeling of freedom from myself, from my problems. You know, when I go to sleep at night, I'm not just a guy going to sleep. I'm two-time Golden Globe winner, Jim Carrey going, to get some well-needed shut-eye. And when I dream, I don't just dream any old dream. No, sir. I dream about being three-time Golden Globe winning actor Jim Carrey. Because then I would be enough. It would finally be true. And I could stop this, this terrible search. For what I know ultimately won't fulfill me.